Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and hopefully you're watching me in black and white because this is the continuation and I do believe the 8th instalment of three continents, one palette with the beautiful Nona and the beautiful Laura and this particular month we decided to get peachy so if you want to find out exactly what the challenge is this month that we set ourselves with this particular palette how this palette performs and what this looks like in a glorious Technicolor then my friends you have the best seat in the house as I have said for some time now and I'm oft hearing it echoed elsewhere grab a drink Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. My eyes are so watery today, folks. I am so sorry. Hopefully, it won't interfere with the makeup application too much. But, you would have seen this in the intro. This is what she looks like. I have to keep popping some of these back in because for some reason the shadows in this particular palette just keep wanting to jump out. Um, this is the continuation of the Three Continents One palette series and it's a palette bingo this time. And I got one, three, four, eight and nine as mine. Um, thankfully it didn't come out with two which is this press glitter if it had I wouldn't use it because being blind in one eye I don't like using um, pressed glitters I don't mind glitter glitter but if you can see the this glitter is very large chunks um, and for me I don't I don't consider that an eye safe glitter at all. Um, that being said, it is super pretty. Um, and if you feel you're happy to wear it on your eye with glitter glue, then crack on. Uh, thankfully, as I said this time, I didn't actually pull that number out. Um, but I'm trying to wipe this off the back of my hand, and it's just. We know what glitter's like, it just doesn't come off, does it? Right, this is still a teaching channel, so with my chronic pain, um, I don't blend as quickly as some people do, but I also go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. So if that's too slow for you, speed widget up there somewhere, feel free to use it. Um, I've discussed in my films for some time now the difference between deep set and hooded lids. They are um, eye types that have similar issues in terms of shadow application um, and performance but very different workarounds. So I'm about to insert a clip which will be very up close and personal. It's literally just going to be my eyes so don't don't be shocked when, when it cuts to that. Um, I will talk you through the different types of eye shape and um, how to determine which you have and give you the work around for both types of eye. Once that's done I will be back to put some of this on my eyelids and tell you a little bit more about 
the other two collabies, as if you don't know them already. Here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows, and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Right, I'm going to start off with a Jeffrey JS8, Jeffrey Morphe brush. It's basically a big old fluffy blending brush. And I'm going to start off with the first shade, number one, which is Darlin. 
Uh, as all, ooh, this has got some kick up to it. Wow. Look at that. It's fine though, because it means you're getting product onto the brush and you can pick the kick up up to build the colour up with the next application. As always, I'm holding the brush right at the end. No, I haven't broken lockdown and been to a salon. These are stick-on nails that I have bought that were personally customised for me. Look at this. They are my Tiger King nails. And yes, that thumbnail said Carol in Bearskin. Love them. Salon about three quarters of an hour drive from where I live was selling some. So I'm like, oh, can you do some for me on short stilettos, please? So she did, which was really sweet for her part in the post. Obviously, I paid her for them. Right, so holding the brush at the end to put as little pressure on as possible, we're going to start off with the circular movements. Now, the reason we do circular movements, literally in two days' time, when I'm filming this, or yesterday when you're watching this I turn 46 and I've lost 14 stone, over 14 stone which is over 200 pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves and by doing circular movements like this first in one direction a bounce in the middle and then reverse in the direction to come back again you're gently moving the eyelid skin without tugging on it to make sure we don't get any tiger, tiger striping or barcoding. Now I do have trouble with this eye because of these super deep creases here this is where my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital when I was five years old so we're talking 41 years ago and uh, I'm reefing the damage now but I'll deal with that bit when we come to that right that's blended out really nicely right, I'm going to pick up some of this uh, kick up to do the other eye and have a chat to you about the ladies that I am collabing with now this is I think the eighth episode of this series so if you have us in the preceding seven once you finish watching this and once you finish watching the other girls films you've got 21 other films to watch seven for each of us uh, Nona oh, hashtag my so called life 1977 is the mastermind behind this she put on her Insta that she wanted to do collab series using the Colourpop monochromatic palettes. Was anybody interested in, you know, joining in with her? And um, myself and Laura both went, hello, yes, yes please. But I'm actually going to have to blow that away because I don't need to use that. I've, I'm happy with the colour pigment that I've got. Right, I'm going to clean the brush off on a microfiber cloth. I don't use a colour switch anymore, it's far too rough on your brushes, especially natural haired ones. I mean this is a synthetic one but that's not the point. Um, I tend to use microfiber cloths or face cloth, you know, washcloth. Right, and I'm going to go in with a, this is a Morphe M139 type of blending brush to go in with Perky which is the second shade that I got well not the second shade but the second in numerical order and I'm gonna build that on a little bit lower down blending it into the first shade so yeah, Nona was the mastermind behind this. Um, myself and Laura both went, oh, me please, me please. So she said to both of us, do you mind doing a three-way collab? And we're like, hell no, we love the idea. Um, 
all three of us get on extremely well and I love the fact that our love of makeup is pulling together three people from three different parts of the world. You've got Nona in America, you've got me in, in Europe, in the UK, and then you've got Laura in New Zealand. So it's, it's just fantastic that something as simple as coloured powder can bring people together. So now Nona is, well I'm, I consider myself lucky to have both these ladies as my friends, but Nona is probably one of the nicest people on YouTube. Certainly one of the nicest in the beauty community. She always has something positive to say on your video. Even if you really hate your video, sorry my eyes really streaming today folks. Even if you really hate your video, Nona will find something good to say about it. She is that supportive friend that we all need, especially nowadays. Especially with the way the world's going at the moment. You know, and it, she, I and Anya are part of the Bitches of Eastwick group because we all got shit on by the same large um, channel. So we're like, do you know what, you're going to treat, are you going to be a bitch? We're going to be the Bitches of Eastwick, we're going to shit all over you, love. And... Um, We've got such a good, strong friendship. I, you know, I truly count her as one of my closest friends. I really do. And Laura, bless her heart, she's actually an artist as well as makeup. She is an artist. She paints. So her knowledge of colours and pigments and colour theory. I've learned so much from her. I mean, I knew quite a lot because I've worked in the print industry. So I understand the whole, you know, CMYK and the, the RGB colour schemes. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, that's cyan, magenta, yellow and black, which is four colour process that is used in printing. And RGB is red, green, blue. So I'm now going down to a Morphe JS12 and I'm going to go into the last mat that got pulled up from which is half baked which is number 9 in the palette because the other two that I pulled were shimmers thankfully although I don't mind doing all matte look. So I've learned an awful lot from Laura. Um, I've said it quite a few times, but she did a, when the, um, when Colourpop released the Uh Huh Honey palette, she did a how to deepen up yellows with something other than brown. Because most people would only deepen a yellow with brown, or like an orangey brown, or maybe a green if they were being adventurous. And through the colour theory that she taught in that film, I learned how to blend yellow and purple together without them going muddy. And, you know, that's just absolutely amazing. Because that is not easy. Those two colours would normally when you blend them together produce they'd go muddy they'd go like a muddy brown or a grey depending on the undertones but uh, yeah she actually she taught me you know i learned so much from her with that and i just she also has a lovely voice she's she's like to me she's like what titania queen of the fairies would sound like sorry laura but 
that's how I view you. <laughs> but I'm also going to put some of this on the inner part because I feel like doing a halo eye today as my eyes are a bit runny. I don't really want to put a shimmer on the inner corner. Well, inner part of the lid anyway. And I should do the same thing on the other eye. So yeah, I count myself lucky to know both of these white these ladies. They are amazing. Um, now Laura ran out of Colourpop palettes a couple of months ago, and she's like, "Oh well, this is my last one then." And I'm, we're like, I had a chat with Nona, and I'm like, "I don't want Laura to stop doing this, do you?" And she's like, "No, I don't." So well, should we say to her that she can just sort of recreate the palette? with colours that she's got because that could also be useful for people that are contemplating buying one of these palettes it could encourage them to you know shop their own stash kind of thing and Nona was like yeah great idea so that's what we did so myself and Nona are using this palette and Laura will be creating a palette which I think is awesome but I'm just going to stretch this lid out here because of this deep creasing because if I don't unfortunately what happens is that the pigment builds up in the crease but loosely rather than being blended on like this and then it ends up cascading down my face and gets into my eye and causes me all kinds of problems do not do that unless you have to if you have to, like I do, only stretch out the part of the lid. You saw I wasn't pulling from over here. I was going from here and just stretching out the bit that had the deep crease in it. I only stretched it out as far as I need to. I didn't pull it out to my ear roll. And I let go as soon as I was done. I'm going to use my, my Heart Revolution Cucumber Spray today to wet the pigment after I have applied it to the brush and I'm going to go in with the Jeffrey JS24 which is a lip brush and I'm going to start off by going into Get Even which is shade number four in the palette this is a very very soft very soft shimmer see how that's and how it's packed onto the, you can see from how it's packed on the brush how loose the shimmer is. So I'm just gonna thank you spray it with cucumber spray and then I'm gonna dry this ferrule off by popping it into my knuckles and spinning it because the last thing you want is moisture going down here and loosening the bristles on your brush. Look at that, I've got glitter on my face even though I didn't actually put any on there. Marvellous. Right, so I'm going to apply this just at the edge of the deeper mat, leaving a stripe in the middle for the other lighter shimmer <laughs> I love her next door's girl singing like so dry the brush off reload it respray some to this lid as well. Doing the same things, applying it to the edge of the deeper mat, leaving a stripe up the middle. Clean the brush off. I like doing a halo eye, it really sort of. 
And the final colour that I pulled, which was number eight, which is a ready or a yacht. Ready or not, here I go. You can't hide. Can I find you? Let's come back a bit, innit? Right. Apply this lighter shade to the middle like so. And then use the tip of the bristles. Lightly smudge where those two colours meet, and then again just at the edge where it meets that mat. And you can see it gives like a really nice soft gradient. You can leave it in in sort of bold stripes if you want a more um, architectural or editorial look but I wanted a, a softer look for mine today I think so again this side a lighter shade in the middle and then use the tip of the brush to blur all of the edges like so right my darlings I'm going to pause you while I pop some foundation etc on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now, I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record in order to speak to you. But you, my darlings, will see me instantly. Hey! Right. I have used the soap thingy on my brows. And I'm going to use this in the half the baked shade to give myself brows to match. Now I had used pomades, coloured pomades for quite a while on my brow, um, but then people were saying that Revolution aren't stocking them anymore and they don't know whether they're you know, going to be repackaging them, reformulating them, or what, but people just couldn't get hold of them. So instead, I found a different way to do it because obviously, with the pomade, that also being like a gel holds your brow in place. So, I use the soap brow, and I've been using the Revolution one just because. I like the little mini toothbrush shaped brush in it, but you can just use a spoolie on an ordinary bar of soap. I don't wet the soap, I use it dry and just brush it through my brows to get them to the shape that I want and then while they're still a little bit tacky, go over them with the powder. And then this way you can guarantee that your brows will match your look. Because obviously you're using powder from the same palette. Just a bit of a quick tip for you all there. Right, I'm going with this flat top brush and again into that half baked shade. And I'm going to run that underneath my eye like so and 
Yes, I flinched this side because I haven't got peripheral vision. So I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's way too far away for comfort when you haven't got your contact lens in. I'm just going to have a bit of a little bit of a wiggle. Hang on. Ooh. I may take that out. I may leave that in. I don't know yet. Right. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Flat topped but chunky, which I love. I'm going to use this to go into Darling, that first shade that I used up here. And use that to buff for the lower lash line out. Sun keeps going in and out behind a cloud, so I keep seeing changes in my viewfinder on the white balance. I'm just hoping that when I come to edit it, it all looks okay. like so and then I'm going to grab my Kaleidos Star Surfer a highlight because this is like a like a rose champagne with a peach shift to it and this is just a cheap eyeshadow brush that I, a lip brush that I bought off of eBay probably about a decade or more ago now but it's perfect shape for getting up under the tail of your brow and for doing your inner corner I like to bring mine along under the tear duct and just blend it in the colour that I've run underneath the eye because I just think for my eye shape that just finishes the look off nicely. You don't have to do that, you can just do your inner corner, it's your face, you do it how you want. Right darlings, I'm going to pause you for one last time while I put some mascara on and some more of this highlight, choose a lipstick, do something with the hair. And I'll be right back. For you again, darlings, it's going to be instant. I am back. Obviously, same highlight. Mascara today is my Essence Lash Princess Volume Mascara, one with the orange top bit to it. Lipstick is a combination of Anastasia Matte Bullet Lipstick in a Peachy and Jeffrey's The Gloss in Wet Peach because it, it's a peach look. So these are the peachiest <laughs> lipsticks that I've got. Um, so this is my finished look with this particular palette. For a pastel palette, I actually got quite a strong look out of it. I'm quite pleased with that. So, what do you think? How do you think I did with the uh, numbers that I pulled? Do you like the look? Do you think I should wear peach more often? Or does it not suit me? Right. Okay, my darlings. If you are one of my usual 4F babies, Please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. Uh, even if I'm still appearing in your news feed, there is a chance you've been unsubscribed. Once you've done that, it'd be awesome if you hit that like button for me. It does help with pushing this out to other people who haven't yet had the fun of joining in with a 4F tutorial. And once you have done that and maybe left me a comment, I'm going to need you to go across to my beautiful girlies, Nona and Laura, and check out their films as well. Because who knows what numbers they've got and what their looks will be like. Have either of them 
had to use the glitter because they're both braver than me but then technically they both see with both eyes so I think when you're blind in one eye it kind of puts you off putting glitter onto the other one <laughs> so don't forget to go over to their channels let them know that you've arrived from 4F and show them the same love and kindness in their comment section that you always do in mine. If you are new here, if you've arrived from either Nona or Laura's channel, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there was something you enjoyed watching. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family, which is of the nicest family on YouTube. So feel free to hit that subscribe button, turning it from red to grey, ringing the bell and saying yes, however many times YouTube currently asks, are you sure you want notifications? Once you've done that, hopefully they'll tell you, I don't know, one in every four of the films that I put up. Speaking of the other films that I put up, there are seven preceding films to this series. And there are a lot more than just seven other films on my channel. So once you've watched Nona and Laura's films, or obviously if you're new here and you've already watched them, as I have said for some time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge in a bit of vicarious makeup loving. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.